um, sli uh, to slightly deviate on our other question that I had was um, you have worked at different uh, places uh, which is, which have involves different uh, kinds of research environments like uh, taking deep mind versus uh, a PhD mm -hmm. student as an MIT and then uh, <coughs> currently postdoctoral at UC Berkeley versus uh, definitely a research scientist at, research scientist at Google AI so in terms of what what are the key differences that you have seen uh, in different research environments how how have you seen yourself adapting to different um, research environments that typically people might not know like not, not a lot of people would have a diverse background of working at different places like you so have you noticed anything something different um, in all of them yeah i mean every lab is different and has a different culture um I think the only universal is that every time that I start in a new lab, it takes a little while to adjust. And I'm always like a little stressed out and trying to like learn the ropes. I don't know if that happens to you as well, but uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, I'm fairly like my 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 work is like maybe, maybe I, I just have one or two experiences. So definitely much lesser than that, but yeah, definitely that, that really makes sense. Yeah. Um, but I guess I can answer like more specific questions if you want, I mean, I think they're all great labs to work in, but they have different pros and cons, so. Oh, is it, so uh, like as in pro and cons in terms of what the research projects that you work with, or is it the the way the research is being approached over there? What are, what, what, what do pros and cons means over here? Um, well, I guess if I can, well, I don't know if we should actually go down this road. <laughs> I was gonna <laughs> okay. say like, yeah, the, the difference between like brain and deep mind, for example, like, brain is much more um, bottom up. So everyone can kind of pick their own research direction. And it's about like trying to get people interested in what you're working on um, mm -hmm. and driving research from individuals into forming teams and upwards. Whereas like oh. DeepMind is much more top down. It's like the organization has OKRs and goals that they want to achieve. And like, they think this will be important to get to AGI and therefore a whole team is working on this. And so you actually just have to fit your research into like the team's broader goals. Um, oh, that makes I don't sense. know if that's what you were asking, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's uh, like the only, uh, the, the rationale behind that question was, I've seen like definitely research varies. Like as a PhD student, if you are working with universities, you have a different dynamic, like the end goal of a research is something uh, on the science of like discovery, but versus uh, how the industries work is towards much more uh, reliability, like you have to make sure these systems scale well and on those uh, lines. So that is one thing that I have noticed. So yeah, definitely. And I, I, ha I haven't had a fortune to work, uh, to speak to a person who has worked within the deep mind. So yeah, definitely. Uh, it's only the media articles that we read from deep mind. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, I like, I love both actually. Um, and they both are great places to work and there's a ton of smart people to collaborate with at both and it's great. Um, I don't think, I would hate for you to think that like either brain or deep mind is too restrictive on what you have to work on. Like you certainly don't have to work on scalability or reliability. And at least like, um, I mean, there's a lot of research freedom in brain to pursue whatever you want. And like deep mind is interested in very like big abstract questions like it can your research can be pretty far out i think um so yeah yeah <laughs>